Welcome to In This Corner. I'm Cyrus Fees, and on this program, we're going to be speaking to some of the biggest names in all of combat sports, whether it be MMA, boxing, professional wrestling, and sometimes a mix of two, which you're going to see on this episode. In fact, this episode is very, very special as we have the two competitors and what many believe is the best MMA fight of all time and certainly launched MMA into the stratosphere uh, in the mid-2000s. Incredible stuff. So we have Forrest Griffin and we have this man, Stefan Bonner, 13-year MMA vet, three-year professional wrestling veteran, UFC Hall of Famer, the world-class revolution heavyweight champion, and the current acting and presiding North Star Combat president. And we have Stefan Bonner on the line. Stefan, how you doing? Excellent. Quite a lead-in. Thank you. <laughs> I got a lot of things to talk about here. Uh, a lot of people not, you know, talking about world-class revolution, but I'm talking about that. And you're the heavyweight champion, so I'm going to give you those props. And, of course, the North Star Combat president. That's huge. Yeah, and I call those fights alongside who? Mr. Cyrus Fees. This guy Mr. right here. There. Absolutely. And as you can see, I'm wearing my Griffin Bonner shirt. Oh. Yes. You know, normally I don't fanboy out. out, but I love that shirt okay. so much, bro. Like, I just thought, I think this is one of the coolest shirts I've ever seen. Yeah, John K. Special, the Ren and Stimpy artist, made that shirt. I guess he's been doing some work for the UFC. But yeah, he made that shirt for when they inducted us in the Hall of Fame. And man, we sold out a ton of them. And that is the last one ever. <laughs> it was. And it was in my yep. size. Awesome stuff. Well, you know, there's a reason why we have to do everything. Uh, over the internet here, over Zoom and this great technology. Of course, that's because we have a crisis on our hands all across the world right now with the COVID-19 and coronavirus. It's the same thing, but it seems like we're saying all the words. That being said, how is it affecting Stefan Bonner in Las Vegas? How are you dealing with the COVID-19? Let's see. For the gym, not so good. <laughs> yeah. This may uh, bury us. Um, for um, Hytiva, I do work with Hytiva.com with Cannabis on Demand, which so we deliver, and it's primarily a technology uh, company. I mean, we're a website more than anything. Um, yeah. We can handle this demand, no problem. Because um, the same builders of this website built the UFC website. It's built on the same kind of framework, the coding. Okay. So it's been quite a blessing for Hytiva, and this virus has been a blessing for Real Water, because Real Water is the uh, I don't know if you know anything about it. It's stabilized negative ions. And a lot of research has been done on this type of water. In medical review journals, they refer to it as ERW water or as electrolyzed reduced water. So no one could agree on a name. Ionized alkalized water, blah, blah, blah. But the main idea is you treat the water with electricity and you add a bunch of electrons to it. And you actually split it positively, negatively charged water. The negatively charged water is has the antioxidant effect. Those are all those electrons, electricity added to it. And it gives you a ton of health benefits. The positively charged shit we throw out. But if you test, I go around testing, like doing demos, and you test um, all the other bottled waters out there. And you wouldn't believe how acidic and positively charged the waters that make up most of the market are. And wow. really, um, aside from real water, the only other one that Test low on the ORP meter, oxidation reduction potential. It says it in its name, how potent of an antioxidant it is. The only other uh, water that measures um, close to zero is Essentia, usually around zero to 50. But real water is negative 150 to minus 200. Um, so it's really cheap and easy to spike up the pH of a water and make it alkaline. It's thought to be impossible to stabilize these negative ions and bottle it up and ship it off. So you could drink it six months later and still get the health. Benefit. That was a pretty so, amazing. Um, that was a pretty amazing commercial, Mr. Bonner. That, that ah, was great. Thanks. Natural pitch well, man. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, this uh, virus, it's it's gonna wreak havoc on our economy, our world as we know it. It's, it's a horrendous tragedy, and uh, like um, like I said, my small business, my gym, we're probably gonna go under. But um, for other companies, it's been a blessing, and you know, yeah. that's how. You got to look at everything, you know, it's always uh, more than one way to look at reality. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, you know, I, I had a chance to 
uh, during these interviews to talk to Ken Shamrock. And he said, you know, now I get to spend a lot more time with my family and that's a blessing. And, and I, and I, I have to agree with him. I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying all the time I get with my kids and, and just taking time to slow way down and appreciate what you do have. And uh, so yeah. it's for, so for that part, you know, you, you hate to hear about anybody that's dealing with tragedy uh, that comes with this thing. But um, at least for that part, there is a silver lining to it. And people kind of put a pause on their life and some people really needed that pause. So could be a yeah, good thing. Well put. Yep. Yeah. The world so, ends tomorrow. No, no regrets from this. Guy. Absolutely. Well, you know, let, let's talk a little bit. Obviously you've had a, a storied career uh, to say the least. Um, let's talk a little bit about MMA and um, we'll get into the UFC and we'll get into the, you know, the UFC hall of fame and, and the epic fight with Forrest. And, but let's talk about this event. Jungle fight number one. I want to talk about this because, you know, I've looked at your record a couple of times, you know, for different things. And, and I always see jungle fight on there and I've seen it with other guys as well. Obviously it's done down in Brazil. From what I understand, it was committed. It's actually commissioned by the Brazilian government. I believe if, if I'm right about that, I believe Not it in 2003, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there you go. That was the first ever edition. And I was looking up and down the card and I saw a couple interesting what a names. card, man. Holy right? moly. That's what I'm saying. Chakare Makako, Chakare tried throwing down with him. Ego got yeah. to him, and he got knocked out. I think that was his first fight. Gonzaga versus Verdun. They had a good mm -hmm. fight, man, and we saw that fight later in the UFC. Go ahead. You could, uh, but no, what, what about this one, though? What about Shinsuke Nakamura? Oh, WWE Shinsuke superstar. Nakamura, yes. That's, it's amazing that stuff. You know, and I, I, I knew he Schultz. dabbled in it, but I didn't know he fought on Jungle Fight. That was crazy. <laughs> Yes, that's right, man. That's right. And Mark wow. Schultz. Mark Schultz, Olympic gold Mark medalist. Schultz, yeah. crazy, right? I mean, just uh, – I mean, and then, of course, you and Machida, you know, which is amazing. You know what I mean? Which is yeah. – it's wild. Who else? Cyborg fought on that card. Mr. Cyborg. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Evangelista Cyborg. Evangelista. Sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just it, – it's a, what a what a wild card that was. Tell me what that experience McCauley, was like going down to Dude, it was like being in the movie Enter the Dragon. That's all I could compare it to, man. <laughs> really? Was at the time, I had just beat Terry Martin. And uh, Machida was 2-0, and although I couldn't get any video of any of them. So I knew nothing about him. Just said he was a karate guy. I was in my, in my head, there, oh, like karate, that crap don't work in this. But then, like, <laughs> you know, not too long before I got on the plane, I was, like, researching him. And on, online, I came across an interview with him in an article that said, um, my father has been training me since birth in Machida karate. That kind of set a little red light off. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, most kids started wrestling in high school and things like that or started karate when they were 15. But my father has been training me since birth. And that really stuck in the back of my head. Like, this kid's been bred for this. Yeah, you know, just uh, such a, a wild time. In and the it, beginning, the fight was. In the middle of the Amazon River in Manaus, Manaus, Brazil, jungle yeah. fight is literally, right? And I think off the plane, we're going to, we, we were in Rio. I was trained at Carlson's old gym in Rio. Then we took a plane to Manaus. And we're just going from Brazil to Brazil. I'm thinking it's like a two-hour flight. It's like a six-and-a-half-hour flight, you know? And then um, I think we're going to a hotel from Manaus. And we're, we're not. We go to a boating dock. And next thing you know, it's like we're on like – a boat really and then well, it was a couple hours about two and a half hours on the boat we finally start in the middle of nowhere in the amazon river coming out on this like eco tourism resort that was just built in the middle of nowhere um and it was this long the, the the rooms were like these huts stacked on top of each other and there were these like long um kind of like bridges like planks that would connect like these flat areas and whatnot and and that's what it was i mean it was literally in the middle of the river so coming up on that resort I'll never forget it. The sun was setting and there was this guy and it was like something out of the movie. I'm on the boat looking off in the distance and I see this guy with two pad holders, one on each side. Ba, 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 ba. And like, and it turned out that was Pachita. I didn't really know at the time, but when the boat got closer, it was like uh, pretty wild. And all I could feel like was like, like, holy crap. You know, I grew up watching Bruce Lee and Under the Dragon. He used to go to this, on a boat to this island to this martial arts expedition to fight and it was just felt like I was exactly in it but then during the fight with Machida's slickness I'll never forget too I was boxing a lot at the time yeah and I right I didn't even telegraph but I rifled like a straight right left right combo like speed fast no telegraph he slipped the first punch countered 
slipped the third one and moved again. And, like, then I kind of, like, it started laughing to myself. And it made my nose bleed a little more than it should have because I, I go, oh, wait, wait, you're, you know, because you always want to think you're Bruce Lee, you know, yeah. coming in on the boat. But I realized that you know, I'm fighting Bruce Lee. <laughs> Uh, that that's crazy and, and what an awesome story and um you know w i talk about that and and obviously you you had most of your time in the light heavyweight division um and then some time in heavyweight and uh machida and no heavyweight for me uh -uh. what's that carlson no carlson um gracie you know he trained me when he moved up uh from rio to brazil after he left brazilian top team and at first getting me fights he was saying well, like what well, weight is he oh he'll fight anyone doesn't matter yeah. and i remember him staying on the phone telling people that and he's saying no no i'm a <laughs> light heavyweight same as vitor like stop yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah. what i was getting at though is that division and i and i always go back to this that's when i really started watching just like a lot of people you know i, I had went from being a big wrestling fan to making that transition into mma and the light heavyweight division was just the standard holder for so incredibly long. And it seems like it's different now. There's just not that depth anymore, which is kind of weird. But at that time, everybody was light heavyweight. It just seemed like there was yeah, right? 15 pillars at that time. It's like Jones kind of cleaned out the division and then it kind of, yeah, right just on. kind of went stale. Yeah. But talk about everybody that was in that division at that time when you were going through that. I mean, gosh, you had Chuck in there and then – Rashad Evans popped up time. in Forest and just everybody was in that division. Great time to be in the UFC, man. Just everyone was in that division, it seemed like. And that's Vanderlei came for over from Pride, was in there. Vitor, before he dropped down, even um, Tito. And we yeah, have uh, Chuck, Randy, Shogun, Forrest, me, Jardine, Rashad, like, like, well, it was kind of like boxing's heavyweight division. That was kind of like MMA's heavyweight division. You know what I mean? Even more than the actual heavyweights, you know, because those are the most exciting fighters, the most personality. It's, that was the standard holder. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you're right. I never really thought about it that way. But, yeah, a lot more depth in that light heavyweight position and, and probably overall better fights because, I, I mean, let's face it, for the most part, like not the very top level nowadays, don't get me wrong, these heavyweights are really conditioned. But back then, they weren't as conditioned, you know? Yeah. Um, the fights wouldn't be as good, and we'd see them get tired more. Um, so, in the light heavyweights, yeah, it was a deeper division and overall more exciting. Boy, Henderson was there a lot, you know? Anderson would bounce around up there. I'm thinking, uh, yeah, the deep division. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Well, you know, obviously, let's talk about the fight. We're going to have Forrest on as well. Um, thanks for hooking that up, by the way. And just talk about that fight. And I know you've, had, you've recounted it so many times, but just the lasting effect and the legacy of that fight. And I, I just had my wife watch it. Uh, like about an hour ago and I said well I got Stefan and I got Forrest and she's like well who's Forrest and I was like oh okay because she just knows you because uh, we work together on North oh, Star yeah. Combat so she's like who's Forrest and I'm like okay you need to watch the fight and she's like what the hell was going on there I said it was insane you know that that was the fight go back to that fight and just talk about the legacy that it holds it's crazy yeah it's just for some reason like um just the whole filming of the show um, like the deepest part of my intuitive self, like knew, I didn't know, like I'd have anything to do with it, the success of it, but I just knew it would be a huge success. Like I just, I don't know, for some yeah. reason, no one else did either. When you go back, everyone else was like, no, it was our Hail Mary. It was the Trojan horse. We were ready to throw in the towel, but I was like, you know, really confident. Oh, this the best. And then all of a sudden I'm in the finals. I'm like, wow. I get a chance to make it the best and uh yeah that's i mean you know i just uh going back on that night i remember dean is super nervous i remember going to the bathroom and like not the the good, most religious guy but i definitely prayed and was like you know just help me do my best and you know and i really looked at it too man you're tuning in that night like that's kind of like it's you're honoring us with your attention, your presence. And the least I could do, I felt, was return the favor with uh, 
to just go for it and, and, and put on a show. No doubt. And yeah, I wasn't so caught up in the winning and lose, and I just got so lost in the fight. And I think that's what people loved it and fell in love with. It was like the, the fighting spirit, like, truly is what shine more than anything in that fight, more than who won or lost, more than technique. And, like, people, um, you know, that, that's something that resonated with their deepest truth. Like, everyone has that that deep down in them that that will that willingness to kind of put it all on the line and fight and let it all out and not hold anything back and and it touched people and it also touched people that me and Forrest had like a brotherly love for each other and it wasn't caught up with all this even though like I remember the beginning and it had that yeah. that had that horrible metal music cha 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 like real like kind of heavy hateful type of music but by the end of it look at everyone's face it was just like these warm radiant smiles and dana was glowing and everyone was happy and there was just this energy this aura this um this i i, I don't know what to call it this energy in the air that people kind of uh, resonated with their deepest truth and made them say you know what like what this isn't that bad after all you know media was painting this sport up as this barbaric thing done between these these jailbird reject barroom brawler type guys no these guys are just like me and you this is all right this is illegal yeah. in 38 states That's bull- let's get that taken care of i like <laughs> well talk about your relationship with Forrest today um obviously he's a He's a big part of the UFC still. And, um, you know, just in the time that we've talked, you know, you guys obviously have a really good friendship. Uh, just talk about your relationship with Forrest today. Nothing's changed. We always get along, you know, just talk to him. Yeah, it's about this interview, setting this up. Like, he gets terrible reception at his house. He has to call me his wife's phone. But, yeah, we don't miss a beat. I go on the show. We always got along. Um, and, yeah, like I said, that brotherly love. We always had it between each other, whether, you know, we went in there and, like, beat the hell out of each other um, or what. It's just it's there, you know? And um, I think that's a big part of the reason why that fight was um, it went over the way it did with people because, uh, you know, if there was that animosity and a bunch of that ego and all about me and I got ripped off or, you know, any sort of, like, that would have kind of ruined the moment. But it wasn't. I was genuinely happy for him. People's, you know, great fight, you know, a lot of heart and spirit. And then people saw us like, wow, these guys are buddies. Well, let's, let's switch gears just a little bit because you switched gears quite a bit. Why? Well, I mean, it's – not a huge jump, but you jump into professional wrestling uh, just a couple years ago. And you've told me some stories, you know, uh, when we worked together at North Star Combat. But let's just talk about that transition, man, because it really is a different world, in my opinion. Because you know, I've worked in both as well, uh, backstage and, and seeing how the promotions run. Just talk about your experience making that jump to pro wrestling and, and, uh, and what, that's, what that's really like. Like, uh, uh, pro wrestling's fun. Like, I don't think people understand, like, my motivation behind doing it. And, uh, you know, a lot of people think I'm doing it to become rich and famous, which isn't it, man. I do it because it's a fun thing to do on the weekend. And when you work the indie circuit, it's worldwide. You could literally go to any city in the entire world and work an indie show. And some of them are freaking really fun and awesome i mean you know some aren't as good and yeah i mean you just never know it's like gamble but for the majority of it's a good time and you know you meet new people and and make relationships and um see the world and uh yeah it's a lot of fun really is there anything that's like is there anything that maybe you that that you've noticed about wrestling that maybe you didn't think it was going to be that way? Any sort of myths about wrestling that maybe have been busted? You know, anything like that since you've been in the business? Well, I mean, it is dangerous. It has a thing, the whole danger and you'll get hurt in that. It is. India is going to be more dangerous than like WWE. You know, those guys, really, if you go or hurt anyone at that level, you know, you're not going to work. But um, so it is, there is that danger factor. But then, you're um you're your own maestro that's what i love most about it they just kind of creative freedom to go out and 
say what I want and go out and create the kind of match I want and kind of learn to, to build a match with do the moves I do best. And I don't know, just that, that whole thing. It's like art. It's like learning art. Um, and, uh, but, but freely learning an art with freedom, you know, sure. with like my input, with, with me going like, this is what I want to go do and doing it. Um, I don't know, just creative freedom and total freedom. I don't know. I do it. It gives me a feeling of fun and freedom that um, just in regular daily life after not fighting MMA anymore, it's something you kind of long for. Well, you, you still you still get that crowd and and you still get the competition and and I know you've made it pretty clear that you, you it's just something you really like to do for fun and it's something that you love to do on the weekends. But does the competitor get into you to where? You know, I mean, you've obviously wrestled for Impact, and we saw you on Impact Wrestling. And uh, is there an ultimate goal? Like, would you really like to eventually have WWE say something to you or AEW or to continue to work with Impact? Like, is there some sort of goal that maybe is off in your head one day? Honestly, no. I, I really wouldn't – I don't care to really play the games and like uh, of, of like <sighs> – of I don't know I kind of see what it takes to to be part of of that it's I don't know it, it, that takes a lot of the the fun freedom out of it the part you know all of a sudden when it's like your life and two hundred and some nights a year you're in a hotel I that you know it kind of yeah a huge difference between doing maybe four matches a month and the weekends and yeah doing I hear it where you're so yeah, yeah, huge difference. So, yeah, honestly, I got no really desire to to go to do it like on that kind of level. Well, uh, let's before before I let you go here, I uh, I have two things. First off, North Star Combat. People see it right here on Mediacom 22. Uh, we've had a chance to work together. Now you're the president. Uh, we do commentary together. Uh, you do the post fight interviews. Talk about, you know, just the experience there with North Star, going up to the Northern Lights, having that Minnesota wild rice at the buffet. Let's talk about North Star Combat a little bit. I don't know. That last show, they sold out. They get a good crowd there, and the talent's getting better and better. Um, good wrestling from Minnesota. And, right, the, the buffets, as far as buffets <laughs> go, I mean – you know, I'm in Vegas. We have, like, the best buffets in the world with King Crab, but that is a hell of a buffet. I really enjoy going up there, though, you know, and that's the way to deal with snow. You go visit it. Oh, how cute. There's snow. They throw snow in there. You don't have to deal with it and shovel your car out of snow. But, um, yeah, we're, we're going to be getting a push, North Star. We got some sponsorship backing, and um, we're selling out this casino. So, you know, let's shop this around and, and build this. And uh, I think we got uh, a good product here. Um, production value is outstanding um yeah i mean it, it looks better than most of the uh the regional shows that i see and yeah. it's uh, it's another thing that's a lot of fun to do and probably part of the reason it's a lot of fun is because i don't have to do it every day you know like sure. like that's what makes it fun so yeah um, no, i agree I, I love it. it it is such a fun experience and uh, it's an easy trip for me. It's not flying around the world. It's just going up to Minnesota, driving over to Walker, and and, and hanging out. And uh, shout out to everybody that's a part of that, from our production to the man, Dean Lamb, and, and the rest of the crew over there. Just great people. And good old Clint. He does a good job for us. Thank you, decent. Clint. He's decent. And, and back to the wrestling. Let me put it like this. I had the fight in the UFC – that made the UFC a monopoly and pretty much crushed the regional shows. So I killed the territory. So now I'm pro wrestling. <laughs> you really think I want to go help like the McMahons buy a new jet and blah, you, like, no, like I'd rather go around the world and wrestle for indie shows and help a guy just like me make his mortgage payment. How's that? Boom. I How's like that it for even in that one's karma. I love it. Uh, last thing, Tiger King. I've asked everybody else. Have you watched this Tiger King thing? No, I haven't watched no? Tiger King yet. Ah, come on, man. No. Yeah, right. Bonner, bro. Bonner, uh, Just free yeah. up a few hours and watch the Tiger King. Is that good? Okay. 
<laughs> Steph, thank you so much, Steph, and I appreciate it, my man. And uh, we'll talk very, very soon. And uh, folks, don't go anywhere. In This Corner continues with Forrest Griffin. We'll be back.